The Fry and Kern Canal has broken many barriers by supplying farmers in the San Joaquin Valley with water. The Fry and Canal is helpful to all the farmers in the San Joaquin Valley by finding a consistent source of water that has supplied farmers in many droughts. The Fryant Canal was made because migrants from the Dust Bowl were farming in California, and that caused overpumping water in Kern County. The solution was to make a canal to supply water to farmers along California. Luckily, the canal fixed the problem of overpumping and still positively affects the farmers today. The canal runs in six different cities and is 152 miles long. That's the equivalent to the state of Vermont. The Bureau of Reclamation was an act in California to convey water to irrigation capacity in locations such as Tulare, Fresno, and Kern County. The Fryant Kern Canal construction began in 1949 and ended in 1951. Ten years after the ground was broken for the Fryant Dam, the Fryant water provided a consistent flow of water for farmers in the San Joaquin Valley. The Fryant Dam opened two 96-inch valves which could provide a strong flow of water for the Fryant Canal. The water in the Fryant Canal could be able to reach Orange Cove in 1949. For this time period, this was an extreme success. The Fryant Canal has had multiple cases of land subsidence due to erosion from the fast-running water. This land subsidence has caused the canal to lose 60% of its water flow. California started a bill called the Move Water Now Act, which would give the Fryant Water Authority $200 million. There is currently a second bill waiting to be passed that will make a side-by-side -side parallel canal running along the Fryant Canal. In theory, this will cause water flow to even out and not cause water to get held up. My name is Justin Four. I am an assistant civil engineer that works in Bakersfield, California, primarily in ag water. So can you explain to us what subsidence is and how it's affecting the Fryant Kern Canal? Subsidence is the result of overpumping groundwater in certain parts of the state, which depletes the groundwater storage and causes soil particles to collapse, therefore making the ground, the ground essentially sinks in certain spots of the, of the state and in certain regions. So how that affects a canal is that a canal is by definition of a canal because it's flow of gravity so there needs to be a high spot and a low spot and that water flows from the high spot to the low spot and if there's a lower spot in the middle of that canal lower than your lowest spot then water will pool up and you'll actually lose capacity because you're losing your ability to push water down the canal. So there are currently two acts for solving the subsidence issues for the Frank Canal. Um, the first act is providing $200 million for repairs and funds, and the second is uh, a parallel canal which may solve water issues. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, so the second act kind of touches on the parallel canal, which um, essentially is just a second canal that's built directly next to the original Frank Kern Canal, and that is either to uh, allocate more water down the state that the original Frank Kern Canal does not have the capacity to support or uh, actually might allow the ability for uh, the Frank Water Authority to push water from the southern end of the state up to the origin point of the Frank Kern Canal or Millerton Lake. Uh, so it just allows for the uh, a little bit more efficient system for water flow across the state that uh, farmers might or farmers that are supported off the frying current are allowed to be. So far, there are two bills waiting to get passed. And if um, the bill about making a second parallel canal um, gets passed, can you tell us about how that's going to work and what the construction is on that? Yeah, so if that bill is passed, um, what they would do is they'd build a second equally sized canal that's directly adjacent to the existing Fryant Kern Canal that uh, just allows water that's flowing down the state to be relatively in the same area. And so those canals would actually be pretty close to each other if they were to be built.
Today, farmers have been thriving off the Friant Canal's water. What would have been overpumping is no more, due to the steady flow and large amounts of water in the canal traveling around Kern County. Farmers need all the water they're taking in more than ever from the canal due to the heat waves during the summers at Kern County. Recently, farmers have said their crops will die if they don't get the water from the Friant Kern Canal. Hi, my name is Marco Zaninovich. I'm a third generation table grape farmer in California. Our family operates vineyards in the Delano, Tarabella, and Bakersfield area. Why is the Frank Canal important for farmers on the east side of the San Joaquin Valley? Frank Canal is important because it's our lifeline to agriculture. Without steady water supply, we're not going to be able to grow the crops we do and feed uh, the United States and the world at the uh, rates we've been able to do in the past several years. The uh, water supply coming from the Friant is, is and has been consistent, and a lot of it's because of the, uh, the work that districts have done to support the, the Friant system in making sure they have steady water supplies. If the Friant Canal stopped running, what effect would it have for farmers in the San Joaquin Valley, and where would they get their water from? If the Friant Canal stopped flowing like it did during the drought, it would be disastrous. The struggles that agriculturalists had by not having steady water supplies meant huge costs in trying to buy other sources of imported water and, and pumping the underground aquifer. And so really the, <clears throat> the steady water supply the Friant provides really takes the pressure off of the need to uh, pound on the aquifer. Our goal is to always use the renewable resource, such as the uh, Friant system, and using surface water as the primary supply of water, even though in some cases it may be more expensive than underground water and pumping out of the aquifer. We know that in the long run, we need to keep the aquifer filled up so that in an emergency, we could pump out of the, out of the underground. Um, the, other, the other supplies would be uh, oil field recovery water, and that's another source that was, you know, heavily depended on during the drought system. Um, and bringing water from Northern California and pumping it in where it's available, uh, those, are, those are all things we have to do to make sure we can augment our supply when the France doesn't have water supply. Um, how do you transport the water from the canal, and how do you pay for the canal's water? So the... Uh, the Friant is divided into districts that manage the distribution of the water, and we belong to half a dozen districts, South Salido, North Kern, Kern Tulare, uh, Arvin Edison, several others that are SMUD that are along the uh, Friant system, and they manage the distribution to each of the ranches that we farm through a uh, underground set of pipelines and pumping stations. So frequently they have to pump east. East of the canal you have to pressurize and push the water up and then it runs gravity flow to the west. And then at each ranch there is a district outlet and that district outlet has a meter on it and that meter is how much water is going to each, uh, each parcel and that parcel is a 320, a 640, an 80 acre piece and then we know how much water is being distributed through that, uh, that parcel. And then each meter gets a monthly bill, and then we pay that bill uh, based on the acre feet that it was distributed.